गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग मैम Good morning, ma'am. So today we are uh, going to discuss about the oral reasons and the associated structure. Okay. In the previous class of anatomy, we have discussed about uh, what is anatomy. Then we have discussed about the external features of the external anatomical characters. Okay, an external anatomy of the fish, where we uh, talked about um, the shape. The symmetry and then external features like scales, skin, and fins. Okay. Now today we will start uh, the topics which comes under the internal anatomy of the fishes. So today first topic we will take the oral reason and associated structure. Okay. So uh, we will discuss about the anatomy of oral reason means the mouth. okay then what are the associated structure in the mouth like the teeth then jaws uh, then other adaptation which is associated with uh, the uh, means uh, the oral reason okay so um, means uh, the uh, the morphological modification in the oral reason okay that is actually uh, required to adapt for different feeding as well as the different habitat of the fishes so we will uh, take uh, in detail today the oral reason in the fish and the associated structures okay so the first we will talk about uh why we are going to study the oral reason and associated structure okay first thing okay so as you have told uh, in this uh, as i have already told in this uh, course we are going to study the anatomy as well as the biology portion okay so and in anatomy we have to study the different type of the systems okay digestive system and then we will going to study the biology biology basically the feeding bi biology as well as the reproductive biology okay so um so uh, when uh, to to know about the feeding habit of the fish okay to know about what they eat okay what is their preferred habitat what are their feeding habits to know all those things okay we have to study the oral reasons okay suppose if we look into the structural adaptation in the position of the mouth the shape of the mouth the presence or the absence of the teeth okay or the gap of the mouth so these structures this anatomical structure in the oral reason actually it helps in predicting the nature of the food and the mode of the feeding in the fishes okay so uh, then the question arises why we need to uh, predict the feeding habit of the fish why there is a requirement to know about the feeding habit of the fish okay so ultimately uh, when we are uh, studying the different fishes okay some of the fishes we are taking in the aquaculture for commercial production okay for production for the for availability of the protein or the, or the fishes uh, to the consumer okay to support the livelihood of the fishing community okay or the people which are associated with the fisheries and aquaculture okay so we are going to take some of the fishes in the commercial culture okay like already like the imc some of the cat fishes and even minor calves they are already in the exotic calves they are already in the practice in our country so suppose if we are culturing the fish in the man made system okay whether it is the pond or even in the some of the reservoirs okay so if we don't know the feeding habit of the fish okay then what you are going to feed okay if you don't know whether fish is a carnivorous so if a fish is a carnivorous means the demand of the protein is high in that fish okay or if fish is the herbivorous okay then the uh, fish uh, use uh, plankton feeder okay some of the fishes feed on the detritus so if you don't know what is the feeding habit of the fish then how you will feed because when you have to culture the fish you have to provide the fish for the feed for the growth of the species na no? so that is why you need to know the feeding habit and to predict the feeding habit of a particular species we always look for the oral reasons and the structure which is associated with this oral reason or the mouth reason so today we will see 
some of the associated structure of the mouth so first we will uh, talk about uh, before uh, means uh, before uh, talking about the structure first we will see what are the different type feeding types in the fishes okay as i have told the fishes are a very diverse group of vertebrates okay they are lower verte vertebrates but they are aware they belongs to a very diverse group okay uh, any modification okay or any um, type of variation you talk about that exist in the fish okay so here we will see what are the different feeding types so basically there are uh, five major feeding types exist in the fishes number one is the predator then grazer strainer suckers and parasites okay so we will see one by one with some of the uh, representative from each group uh, now the predators okay they are the fishes that feed on the macroscopic organisms or they feed on the big size uh, aquatic animals like fishes and other uh, mollusk okay and uh, the animals which are in the aquatic um, an environment okay so because they use on the big fishes or a big size aquatic animals they have usually a very well developed teeth okay the teeth they are in, uh, in the fishes they are very well developed which help in grasping and holding the Prey. Okay, so the example is the white, the sharks and the barracudas. They are the very good examples of the predators. Okay, these are the fishes which actually predate on the or feed on the microscopic animal. Then another, these are another example of the predators like the pike and the gars. They are also the carnivorous fishes which feed on the uh, big size. Animal, aquatic animals now the second category of or the second feeding type in the fishes is grazers grazers means that graze like uh, the animals okay which land animals like cows buffaloes or goats which graze on the land now uh, the grassy land the same way uh, the this the grazing uh, feeding habit also found in some of the fishes so they basically feed on the planktons or the organism which are present on the bottom of the water body okay and some in the column region okay so there are some of the fishes like bluegills then parrot fish okay and some of the butterfly fish they are the grazers they graze on the bottom okay or in the column region on the small planktons and organisms okay so these are the some of the example in the freshwater like strenus mregala cyprinus carpio and labio roita they also comes under the grazers okay their feeding habit is like grazers now the third one is the strainers strainers means a uh, filter feeders which filter the water for food okay so they are basically the plankton feeders whether the zooplankton or the phytoplankton so what happen uh, they have some modification in their gill rack gills okay their gill rackers are basically the the gill rackers which are the small projections which is present on the gill are opposite to the gill filament okay in the opposite orientation so they are very fine elongated and densely placed so this gill racker modification or this modified gill rackers actually serve as a sieve strain as hum chai banate we used to strain the tea na humne aaj chai patti dal ke boil kiya when you used to serve the tea in the cup you used to uh, uh, pour the tea through a strainer so that jo chai patti hai wo aapki channi mein reh jaye aur the the uh, the liquid will go into the cup the same way their gill racker has worked as a strainer so when water passes through it it actually uh, strain uh, the small uh, planktons means zooplankton or the phytoplankton so basically in this type of fishes the food is selected on the size okay then there are several fishes which are plankton feeder or the filter feeder or strainers we can say like the uh, hilsa hai then katla then gizzard sharks they are some of the fishes which have the filter feeding uh, behavior okay like some of the example like katla katla gedusia chapra uh, then hypothalamic smolotrix sharks hilsa gizzards these are the examples or the representative of strainers or filter feeder okay now the next category the fourth one is the suckers okay as the name suggests 
uh, they used to suck the food or the material that contains the food by the bottom of the water body okay so they basically suck their mouth structure is adapted in such a way that that helps in sucking the food from the bottom of the water body so um, like some of the sturgeons and the loaches okay they have this kind of feeding behavior or the feeding type now the next one is parasite okay this is the most unusual type of feeding habit okay but yes it is it is also present in the fishes uh, some of the primitive fishes like the lampreys okay they are actually the parasites you just see the structure of the mouth okay the oral region uh, which have these uh, pointed okay the conical pointed structure with the help of this they used to get attached to the body surface of the large fishes and from where they used to suck the body fluid and they directly take the nutrient from the host okay so parasitism is also found in the fishes so these are the six different type of feeding behaviors or the feeding type which major feeding type which exist in the fishes now now we will talk about one of the structure which is present in the oral region that are the teeth okay so as i have told the there are several adaptation in the oral region or the okay in a fish for feeding on different habitat okay and teeth are one among them so uh, the very first question from where they have been arised okay so it was some previous studies and some fossil records uh, and some living fossils actually from all these information it was thought or it was considered that they are arised from the scales which covers the lip or the mouth region okay like the living shark the squaliformis or the dog fishes in where you can see that the plocoid scale which is present on the skin which actually created into the teeth on the jaws okay so it is thought that the teeth are basically uh, arised from the scales which covers the lip region okay now in the bony fishes there are basically three kind of teeth based on the position they based on the location where they are found in the oral region okay the some fishes have the teeth on the jaw some fishes have inside the mouth and some in the throat or the pharynx okay so we will see different type of teeth which are present in the fishes so first we will um, talk about the teeth which are present in jaw, on jaw okay so there are basically five type of five major type of teeth which are present in jaw the cardiform villiform canine incisor and molariform so in the jaw there are basically the bones the maxillary bone like this one is the maxilla okay this maxillary then premaxillary and the dentary bone which is present on the mandible or the lower jaw so the dentary premaxillary and maxillary these are the bones where the teeth are present okay the jaw teeth are present means these different type of teeth they are basically present on the maxillary premaxillary and dentary here you can also so this is the premaxillary region this is the maxillary and this one is the dentary in the on the lower jaw okay so we will take uh, all these five type of jaw teeth one by one so the first one is the cardiform teeth okay so they are very short fine pointed and numerous in number okay just see you can see in this image there is a numerous teeth okay uh, which are short pointed okay and very fine you, in this gap you just see these are the teeth which were shed okay so these or here you can see in this fish okay this is basically a bass where you can see the teeth which are short fine and numerous in number so they are this type of uh, this is the one type of teeth which is present on the jaw is the cardiform teeth they are uh, they are present in the multiple row they are numerous in number they are short fine and pointed and some of the examples in which this type of fishes are present like the american catfish of the family cloridae then some of the perches like uh, the channa okay they have the teeth in row and some sea bass they also have the cardiform 
teeth now the another one is the villiform teeth okay villiform teeth are more or less similar uh, in the structure to the cardiform teeth but uh, the difference is that they are a bit longer than the cardiform teeth okay so here you can see this is the deep sea black dragon fish okay these two this is the image of the deep sea black dragon fish here you can see this there is a numerous teeth okay which is arranged in the jaw they are very much similar uh, in structure to the cardiforms but bit longer okay they are elongated more elongated uh, than the cardiform teeth now the next one uh, the incisor teeth okay so incisors here you can see these are the incisors okay so they are the incisors which are sharp edged cutting teeth okay and there is a one fish which is known as a parrot fish they have some modification in the incisor teeth here you can see that their incisor uh, all the incisors are fused and when they fused and they form the beak like structure here you can see this is the beak because of this beak these fishes are known as a parrot fishes okay the fishes of the family scaridae because their incisors are fused together and form a short beak okay uh, and this is a normal incisors uh, which are present in the other fishes they are basically the sharp edge cutting teeth okay then Uh, the fourth one is the molary form teeth they are uh, used for the crushing and grinding of the food okay that's why they are flat in shape here you can see that these are the mol molars okay or here you can see this one is the incisor and these inside these are the molars here you can also see these are the molars on the upper and the lower jaw and this one are the incisors okay these Uh, kind of teeth are found in the skates rays and drums and many other fishes okay now the next one is the canine teeth okay so as uh, canines okay they are basically the fang like long pointed teeth which are generally we used to see the type of teeth which is present in the dogs okay so they are the canines you can see they are the they may be they are subconical straight or somewhat curved okay and these teeth are actually adapted for pursing and holding okay so this is the example of wall eyes and this vampire tetra okay so these are the different type of teeth which are present on the jaw of the fishes okay the number one is the cardioform then the villiform followed by the incisors then molary form and canine teeth okay now we will see the position of these different type of teeth on the jaw here you can see that the incisors which are present in the front row on the upper and the lower jaw and here also you can see the incisors which are present on the front of the upper and lower jaw and molars have uh, in the back regions okay the canines this is the arrangement or the position of the canines on the jaw upper and lower upper and lower jaw then this is also the position of the incisor and now this is the villiform teeth which are arranged in multiple rows short and numerous and this is the arrangement of the molars and the incisors okay so these are the different type of possible positions of the different type of teeth on the jaw in different fishes okay now as i have told in the fishes the teeth are also present in the throat and the mouth okay the pharynx region so here are the pharyngeal teeth in the last semester when we are studying the taxonomy of the fin fishes that time we have studied one order that is known as the cypriniformis order the di the diagnostic character of that order is that the presence of pharyngeal teeth or the toothless jaw okay means the fishes of this group they doesn't have the teeth on their jaw but they have a well developed teeth in the throat or the pharynx region so the presence of the pharyngeal teeth is the diagnostic characters of the cyprinids okay so here you can see uh, inside these are the teeth which is present on the jaws and here you can see uh inside uh, the mouth near the uh, throat these are the three rows of 
pharyngeal teeth okay in saprinids they are arranged as a pavement like structures they are also found in suckers and some other fishes and there is a one modification of the pharyngeal teeth which is uh, which occurs in the moray eels okay this moray eels have here you can see that they have the small are uh, teeth viliform teeth on their jaw the upper jaw and the lower jaw they also have the pharyngeal teeth in the pharynx but these pharyngeal teeth are movable movable means when the prey comes near the mouth this fish used to eject the pharyngeal teeth out from the pharynx to the mouth and then it it is pharyngeal teeth they catch the prey and goes back to the throat so means with the help of this pharyngeal teeth modification the fish this moray eels they used to have the live animal directly in their throat okay so this is one of the modification of the pharyngeal teeth which is present in the moray eels okay so this was about uh, the different type of teeth which is present in the fishes and the the type of teeth which is present in the fish actually defines the feeding habit of the fish okay now some other moral adaptation for feeding the first i have told the teeth the type of teeth actually directly associated with the feeding habit of the fish which i have already taken now we will uh, discuss about the lips the shape of the lips or the modification or adaptation in the lips shape of the mouth and adaptation in the gill racker so we will take it one by one so now the oral adaptation for feeding means the adaptation or the modification in the lips so the suctorial feeders or the suckers okay the fish that sucks the food from the bottom okay the the bottom of the water body okay they have the modified lips they have the inferior type of mouth means the mouth position is on the lower side of the body okay on the ventral side of the body and they have a very thick here you can see that they have a very thick and the fleshy lips okay the and it is movable so because of this uh, thick and fleshy lips okay they it it provide the cushion type of structure and it helps in sucking the food from the bottom and this is also a uh, modified lips in the sturgeons okay so this uh, the lips uh, in the in the fish which feeds on the bottom or which have the sucker feeding habit they have the modified lips to support that feeding okay now the modification in the shape of mouth okay so uh, particularly in the grazers and suckers okay suctorial feeders the grazers and the suctorial feeders their mouth shapes have some modification okay like some of the fishes like cornet trumpet pie fishes and many butterfly fishes okay they have the elongated beak like structure these adaptation help them to like in the butterfly fishes they used to uh, take the food they use their beak to take the food inside the coral reefs okay the coral reefs are basically the habitat of many micro many uh, small size animals okay so they use their beak to take the food from the coral reefs okay and some of the fishes where the lower jaw is much longer the The, their jaw forms the beak like structure but lower jaw is projected more as compared to the upper jaw that situation is known as the half beak okay so the fishes that have the half beak usually have the surface feeding behavior so these are some of the modification in the shape of mouth to have the food um, take the food from their habitat okay now the adaptation in the gill racker as i have already told the the fish the plankton feeders or the strainer fishes okay the fishes which is strain the food from the water okay they have some adaptation in the gill rackers here you can see that this is the uh, one um, this is gill arc okay and this red color is the gill filaments okay and this black one is the gill racker so this is the structure which is found very common in the filter feeder fish okay and here you can see this small strong point uh, means hard pointed uh, gill rackers this is the situation generally found in the fishes which have the 
carnivorous behavior okay so here you can see that because of this humerus very fine uh, a long rachis it serve as a sieve and when the waters which also have the phytoplanktons and zooplanktons when it filter through it in this rachis basically filter out the plankton which is taken care by which is taken as a food by the fishes so this is also one of the adaptation in the gill racker which is associated with the feeding habit of the fishes okay so this is about today's class any question